It's great to see you, Commissioner. I hope you're doing well, sir. I am well. It's good to be here. Thanks for being a part of our media days. Yeah, and, and you know, I've watched this event, you know, from when Saban was back here, and you may have remembered the story. You remember the story when Saban's dog got oh, loose? Oh, absolutely. I was LSU. standing by the door, and I walked right by me. The dog walked right by me into the, the big press interview. He acted like he knew what he was doing, didn't he? The he, dog was the looking dog for... The dog was very confident in his position and presence that But, I mean, day. I guess if you're going to be Nick Saban's dog, I guess you got to be pretty confident, <laughs> right? Okay. Um, probably well-disciplined. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's, there's a process, right? Yeah, I would guess so. All right, so um, let me ask you, how many members of uh, the media are here this week? I, I don't know. We have usually you, hit we, just over 1,000. You know, it's interesting because we used to talk about that stat, and I have consciously avoided just the stats to try to talk about stories, like my, my speech yesterday talking about uh, integration and uh, the 50th anniversary. I talked about it yesterday first, on the air. First, yeah, and, and uh, I have thought consciously, I probably should ask the numbers, and I don't, so you've got me. Well, but, but Do you know the number? No, I, usually it's over 1,000. It, it's generally over 1,000, but uh, so we will... Number. What, what's the number of credentials? Do you know what the number of credentials? What's the number of credentials that were uh, 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 credentialed for this event? I don't know, but I'll find out before you finish. You know, we ramped it up when we added the SEC network. We'll find that information. Okay. Somebody knows. So but, we're looking for that. But, yeah. I, but I, either way, I watch this room. You watch what we do. You watch the interest in the SEC. I mean, you have to be pleased as a commissioner look back and go, all the tension that is given to this sport in the SEC. I mean, this has to make you – Sort of have a little sense of pride of where it, where it was at and where it is today. Uh, big sense of pride. And it's a tribute to everyone who's come before, uh, everyone in positions now, uh, the young people who are part of our programs, the visibility of our universities. I mean, there are so many good stories that weave together to make this conference the great organization that it is today. Um, but, you know, to sit in this chair and... Uh, focus on it from time to time um, is healthy and then you want to make sure you're hungry so you don't want to just sit back and become complacent that well we've achieved enough because no one's ever said that to me they've always said what's next so I spend a lot more time on what's next than, than where we are currently but it's good to be where we are currently. How hard is it when you're sitting in that room in Destin Florida managing 14 different alpha males in, in head coaches and you're trying to please each one of them and listen to a concern. How hard is it to, you know, Nick Saban comes at it from one angle and certainly Derek Mason comes at it and Kirby Smart, they all come at it from different angles. How hard is that of your job having to listen and take all that into consideration? I actually think that's the best part of it. Is it job. really? Oh, okay. absolutely. Um, one of the things that I enjoy here is interacting with our coaches and student athletes because I get to know them as people. One of the advantages I have is individuals who are icons in their states or in the country are people I know and I work with and I learn from and hopefully they learn a bit from me so when you're in that room there'll be disagreements and views they'll share with me where maybe we missed an opportunity I'll share the same type of thing with them um, one of the really memorable moments was a few years ago talking about pace of play and length of games sure. and, and different coaching philosophies and it took about five minutes for people to get through maybe the tension that exists, they play their cards close, but then talk about how they view the game of football, their different philosophies, and you, you sit back and listen, and you're like, wow, these are the people in the country the best at what they do, talking about the technical aspects of their, their job, and that's really a rewarding opportunity, and we'll work through disagreements. Uh, oh, that's sure. part of the job, but more often in that room, you do have egos and different views and strength of personality, uh, but everybody historically has come together to make this conference what it is. Let me look at the, the league right now. When you look at the league, there's a, there's a concern that I have about the image of the SEC. And it's, it's small. It's not big. It's not like it's a big problem. Let me ask you about that non-conference game in November. Has there been any discussion to possibly moving that back to an, another and having more quality at the end of the season? The next to last week? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. That uh, is a conversation. So some of our schedules rotate through. Um, will continue to be a conversation. And actually, um, the, the spread and scheduling of games throughout the season is a topic of conversation because you can have some variance based on open weeks and how those balance sure. out. And that, that next to last weekend becomes a little bit more of a lightning rod. 
and uh, is a topic of conversation without any prediction of outcomes. But how do we populate quality games throughout the, 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 the schedule? We're not one. You know, some, some conferences say, hey, first four weeks is yours and the last eight weeks is ours or last nine weeks, whatever it may be. And we, we start playing conference games in week two and, and spread those out. And that has an impact in week 12. We like playing games in week two. But uh, we're attentive to those issues, and we try to balance it. But, uh, you know, sometimes there's not a magic potion for that. that is the ninth conference game on hold, or is that still being talked about behind the scenes? We spent a lot of time in 2013 and 14 having really healthy conversations about format completely. And I've reminded folks uh, there's been this, like, divisional question that pops up uh, this week. I've reminded that we decided on eight conference games, and it's worked really well for us. It's worked really well. We have played for 10 of 11 national championships since 2006, and we've won eight of those, if my count's correct. Um, we also said, let's play a ninth game against a high-level non-conference opponent, and that produces a Florida State game in week one, a Florida-Michigan game, uh, an Alabama-Florida State game week one, Florida-Michigan, Texas A&M, UCLA, uh, North Carolina State, South Carolina, uh, LSU and BYU and Auburn and Clemson and I could go on because then there's a Georgia Notre Dame game in week uh, two I think and uh, those things don't happen without the expectation we all play this high level ninth game now you could maybe trade that I don't know if that's a good trade for college football because what we're doing is working we've got new intersectional games that have been created Arkansas is playing Notre Dame uh, I think in 2020 is the first of those games. And I think those are healthy outcomes of con continuing to have that eight-game schedule. Well, I, yeah, I mean, you think about the SEC and those who would like to throw stones at the quality of the league, maybe it's a changed a little bit. The SEC could make a statement in the first two weeks of the season and go, um, what were you guys talking about? We drifting away? Yeah. I mean, you, you think about the league and how they could, if you want to talk about reestablish or continue the dominance, uh, the first two weeks can – can really help push this conversation when, forward. Two years ago here, uh, it was my first as commissioner. The conversation was you're on the downhill side. Sure. And then I think we went like 12-2 and two in those games. I think we went actually 11-1, 12-1-1 we lost a game to weather in Baton Rouge that year, a McNeese State game. And uh, I probably tweeted that pretty good for a down year. And then we went 12-2 and two on the back end in postseason games. And no conference had ever won 12 games. And I reminded folks it was pretty good for a down year. But uh, there'll be some anxiety in me. Not that I can go influence the outcome of the game once it begins. But it would really be rewarding to see us step up and be victorious those first couple weeks in those non-conference games. How many games. games do you see on a Saturday? Um, usually one, two at the most. Um, I'm going to actually be really busy that opening weekend. So on on Saturday, we'll see two games in Texas, uh, Florida-Michigan in the afternoon, LSU-BYU in the evening, then go out to L.A. for Texas A&M, UCLA, and then Labor Day is uh, Tennessee and uh, Georgia Tech in the new Mercedes-Benz Stadium. So that'll be a fun weekend, and then settle out to one, maybe two, uh, through the rest of the season.